All right, welcome everybody. We're going to give this online lunch and learn an attempt this month just to see um, how it works and hopefully it will help you guys with scheduling. I know everybody's busy. So just remember at any point you can pause the video if you need to to work in your own on your own tablet in Schoology in your own classes or you can rewind and watch it over and over again as many times until you get it right. Um, and of course you can always email me or come see me. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is about student completion rules and analytics in Schoology. And we're going to figure out a little bit more um, what that is all about. So if you haven't already, um, please go ahead and sign in. Go ahead and pause the video and sign in and then resume watching the video when you're finished. So I always share the responses that you give me um, in the pre-survey. And so here's just a little chart. This is the average responses. I received about 11 um, answers to the survey. So when I asked you how often you're using Schoology analytics or the student completion rules, the average response was 2.7. How comfortable you feel, average response was a 2.9. And how knowledgeable are you with the analytics and the student completion rules, the average response was a 2.5. So again, I just share these responses with you guys so um, you know sort of why I'm doing what I'm doing with this Lunch and Learn and you can kind of gauge where you fall on the spectrum in relation to your peers. So what are the student completion rules? They are rules and requirements uh, that you can set on, you can actually do it on folders all together, or you can do it on the actual course materials. So the assignments, a link, a document, a test, that in these rules, students have to complete um, based on whatever rule you set. So your options, you can say that they must complete. So for instance, an assignment, um, they must complete the assignment. They must view the item for documents and links. They must post a comment or reply. They must make a submission. And you can actually also for tests and quizzes um, and assignments and discussion boards, you can actually say that they must score at least a certain amount. So if it's a 25 point quiz, you can actually set it so that they have to score at least a 20 before they'll be able to move on. And you have different options based on which type of material you actually have in the folder. So you'll notice the first option up at the top is a hyperlink to a different website. And the only option that we have there is to view the item. So there's really not, nothing else that you can gauge when it's a link um, or a document that's been up, uploaded. All Schoology can really mandate is that they open it and they view it. For something like the quiz, you have more options. You can just, where they have to view the item, um, they could have to post a comment or reply. You also have that option for discussion boards. Make a submission would mean that they just, they attempt the test and they submit the test. And then this is that option, that score at least. So right here it says that they have to score at least a 70 out of 80 on the quiz. So depending on which type of course material you upload, you'll get different um, requirement options for the student completion rules. You also have the option for them to complete it in sequential order. If that box is checked, that means that they must do it in this order, whichever the order that it appears. Um, if you you don't care that they do it in a certain order, you just want to make sure that they at least get a, you know, a certain score on a quiz, you can uncheck that box um, and then it won't matter which order they complete it in, they'll just have to complete the requirements that you set in any order. One thing that I want to point out, you cannot add due dates when you have completion requirements on. So if you say an assignment is due on um, February 10th by midnight, that will actually be removed if you set student completion rules. There is an option to vote to get this feature added, which I'll show you in the Lunch and Learn folder. 
So adding the completion requirements is really easy. It's just a few clicks. Um, first, you'll want to make sure that you load all of your course materials and get all of the contents loaded into your folder first. So go ahead and pause this video to get at least cor two course materials loaded into your folder. It can be a document, a link, an assignment, whatever you want. Um, just go ahead and get at least two things loaded in. And once you've done that, come back and resume playing the video. Okay, so now that you've got your course materials loaded into your folder, we're going to go ahead and actually put some student completion rules on it. So it's really easy to add them. Um, go ahead and go into your folder and then you just click options at the top there select student completion and then you'll click add requirement and you can add as many requirements as you want you don't have to add a requirement for each item and then right there at the top you'll see um, where you can check if you want them to be completed in a sequential order or not so go ahead and pause the video to add your completion requirements. You can resume when you're finished. And remember that you can rewind the video if you need to watch how we just did that again. Once you've added completion rules to a folder, you can check students' progress. So this is really nice, um, especially since it removes due dates when you add the completion rules. You All you do you'll see the student progress will appear next to um, add materials and options when you're inside the folder. You just click that student progress and then a new window will open and it will tell you how far each student has come in their progress and how much they've completed. So this is helpful since there aren't the due dates. All right, now that we've got student completion rules out of the way, I wanted to show you the course analytics. Um, there's nothing that you need to set up, and there's really nothing that you can do, essentially, with the analytics, but it's helpful because it gives you information and insight about what's going on in your course with each user, each assignment, discussion, or link. So this is more helpful information for you. So over on the left-hand side, where you see materials, updates, everything, you can get to this by clicking analytics. So go ahead and pause the video for a second so that you can pull up analytics in your own course. And the analytics, you can look at your overall course stats. You can actually see each user and it will show you the last time they logged into Schoology the last time they accessed your course. You can look at each assignment and see if the student submitted an assignment or not. You can look at the number of discussion board posts that students have made. And you can look at hyperlinks and it will show you how many times a link that you have posted has been viewed by the entire class. Um, so let's go ahead and let's see this in action and I'll show you a little bit more of a breakdown. So here we're on the course analytic view page. Um, this just gives you an idea. I don't really think that any of you will be too interested in this page. I think you'll be most interested in the user page. This is where you can see all of the students in your class. Um, the last time they were logged into Schoology, the last time that they accessed your course, the total amount of time that they've spent in your course, and then number of posts, that means number of times that they've posted in the discussion board. We'll look more at the user analytics page in just a second. When you go to assignment, this will show you a list of all of the assignments that you have in your course. Um, the number of views, that's total between all of the students. If you click on an assignment, it will show you a breakdown of all of your students. If they have submitted it, um, you'll see a yes or no next to their name. Under the discussion, if you're grading a discussion based, you just want to make sure that they have posted, this may be the easiest way for you to just quickly check to see if students have posted. Um, however, of course, if you're grading for content, this wouldn't be the easiest way to do it. Um, but so, 
we could go just click on any discussion board that you have and then you can look to see posts and it tells you the number of posts over on the right hand side that each student has made in your class so again if you're just grading quickly based on you know making sure that they've made two or three posts to the discussion board this is a really quick way to check to do that and then the links page will show you the total number of clicks on that link so one feature of the analytics that I really like are the in-depth user analytics so if you click on the user tab you'll get a list of everyone in your class and you can actually click on the row of whichever student that you want to see and then it will take you and you can um, toggle between test and quizzes assignments and discussions so you can see all of the analytics based on all of those types of course materials in your class and you can also toggle between users so this makes it really easy and fast to fly around and check out what's going on and once you've set your one and once you've got a student up that you want to view you can see the first and last time that they accessed whatever the course material is so in this instance it's a test or quiz you can see the total time that they spent on it and you can see when they made their first and last submission um, this was only a one submission count so it's the same time but if you set um, an assignment or a quiz for multiple submissions you'd be able to see how many submissions they made when they made their first submission when they made their last submission so this is really helpful especially for those students that say you know they tried it at home but they couldn't get it to submit or couldn't get it to load well these analytics um, if you have a perpetual offender these analytics will come in handy because you'll be able to check to see well you know it actually says that the last time you accessed this was five days ago or the last time you were even logged into my course in Schoology was five days ago so I promised you before that I would show you where to go to vote for Schoology to add due dates to the student completion rules so this hyperlink that you see on the screen now it is in the lunch and learn folder vote to add due dates to student completion rules and if you go to that link you'll be taken to a screen where you can actually vote and this red arrow is pointing to it now um, but you'll just click that up arrow and you will need to log in first it's the Schoology community area and then it'll vote and you can also add a comment make sure that you vote and the more they see this and the more requests that they get for these features um, the higher on their priority it becomes to make this a reality for us so I promise to keep you guys updated on anything that I hear but in the meantime go ahead and vote for the feature to be added so before you forget go back to our professional development course and we'll go back to our lunch and learn folder and you have just, it's a very short five question, all true, false, um, just a quick little quiz just to make sure that, um, you know, you watch the video and you've got a good understanding of the completion rules and analytics. So our next Lunch and Learn is on March 6th and currently it is slated for a teacher's choice. So I'll be in touch with you in the meantime over the next few weeks to see what exactly it is that you guys wanna learn and feel like you need more time spent for a PD. And if you wouldn't mind, just take a couple of minutes to fill out the Lunch and Learn survey, especially since this was a different format. If you loved it, if you hated it, um, I need to know to make sure that I can accommodate your guys' needs. So thanks so much and please let me know if you have any questions.